In today's video, how low can you go in body fat percentage? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravello from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to cover the topic of just how low body fat percentage could go. And it's a pretty interesting topic because I, as a bodybuilder, get as lean as possible. I try to get as shredded as I possibly can. And body fat percentage is one of those things that we put a lot of value on, right? You get to tell people, yeah, I was 10% body fat, or I lost 5% body fat, or I, I reached 5% body fat. But how much do we actually know about body fat? We've all also heard the stories that if, well, if you go below 5% body fat, technically you're dead, right? Like we hear these things all the time. So what I'd like to talk about is the question I got. And if you like this type of information around an evidence-based approach to nutrition, to training, to reaching your physique goals, please hit the subscribe button. That's what I love to do here. And today's question comes from right here on my Instagram direct message. So if you have questions like this that you'd like me to answer, go to my Instagram, send me a direct message like my man Cal Deep did here. Now, I'm gonna read the question, then we're gonna review it, and we're gonna talk exactly about why I feel that way. So, I watch your videos on YouTube regularly. Love what you say. I have a question for you. I'm 51 years old, 5'9". My current weight is 135 pounds. I'm currently at 7% body fat. I have achieved this with resistance-based training and a contract meal plan. I do keep my protein high. My question is, how low can I go in terms of body fat percentage? I want to get to 5%. Well, this is a really great question, so I had to dig in. I had to know, what do you think 7% body fat looks like? Because as a coach, when someone reaches out to me for coaching and they tell me a goal that's say 10% body fat or 5% or 5, whatever body fat they tell me they want, I have to ask them for a picture of a person that they believe represents that. Because there is no consistent number for body fat percentage, right? There is certainly lots of different ways to measure body fat. And unfortunately, the only way to accurately measure body fat is through autopsy, right? We can do it after we are deceased. But to get an accurate body fat test, you know, there are things like DEXA, but there is a margin of error. You know, you can do body fat calipers. You can do uh, even things in the water. There are lots of ways to do it. But there is no standard that is absolutely 100% correct, okay? They even do ultrasound of your body fat and they can use math equations, but because of human differences in genetics and shape and all that stuff, it's not 100% accurate. Let's, let me answer your question. So I, I wanted to pull up your picture here and I'll post it on the screen here so, so, so everybody could see. First, I wanna just applaud you, my friend. Thank you for, for sharing your journey with me and following my YouTube videos. It really gets me excited about this because seeing your transformation got me excited. As you guys know, we, uh, we do a transformation challenge here. And if you'd like to be involved in the next one, which is gonna start in the next eh, couple months, uh, I'll put a link below to register just to be notified. You'll get nothing else from us, just a notification that the transformation challenge is gonna start and the details on it. Now, the last one that we completed was a 90-day transformation challenge. We gave away $5,000 and it went so well that we're doing it again. But seeing your transformation, sure, it, it reminded me exactly what I see of the people that entered our transformation challenge and it's why we're doing what we do. We're trying to put out lots of information to help people like you. So awesome work, congrats. Look at this transformation, guys. It's quite remarkable. Now, I also found a picture of you from one of your recent Instagram posts, and if you guys are inspired by this guy, go follow his Instagram. He looks awesome. 51 years old and made this much of a transformation. Now, would I put you at 7% body fat in this picture? Probably not. There's a few things that I look for when I see someone that is well below 10% body fat. Now, I didn't see any pictures of your lower body, but that's usually the indicator for me that someone's well below 10% body fat because at 10% body fat, I would expect the lower back to be completely gone. I would expect the abs to be super well defined. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not 10% or 7% body fat. What it means is I can't tell because I can't see your physique from head to toe because some people get extremely lean in their legs before their upper body. But generally speaking, the upper body is not gonna be, uh, is gonna get lean before the lower body, okay? And that's really the difference and that's where I see people dieting down to get leaner. So based on where you're at, I'd put you around maybe 10, 11% body fat, okay? That's just my, in my experience, if you were a competitor, my goal would be to get you even leaner. So I certainly think that you can get leaner. What body fat percentage can you get to? Now, the lowest that I've seen kind of recorded consistently for men, 
is around 5%, right? You'll see some people kind of test under. A lot of that can come into water, hydration, what part of the day you test at. But, you know, if we're talking about 5% body fat, we're talking about completely striated glutes. We're talking about some of the best bodybuilders in the world, men. Now, natural bodybuilders, not natural bodybuilders, really it's gonna come down to exactly your goal of getting all that body fat off. And I've seen some completely shredded natural bodybuilders Probably more consistently, I see the top natural bodybuilders in the world get leaner than I see the top pro bodybuilders that are that are taking stuff get lean. And I don't know why that is. I think uh, there's just a difference of approach there, maybe a longer process to the diet. Whatever it is, both of them at the top of the sport. When you look at the guys that are winning the pro bodybuilding shows in the Olympia, they are 5% body fat or less, right? And they can report whatever numbers they want, and I'm not going to dispute them. But my point being, you're not there yet. So how lean can you get safely? I think what you need to start looking for is when you start to notice you have real problems with energy, okay? You have real problems with recovery. Sleep starts to become an issue and you just start to become a little bit food focused. Uh, there can be th things like temper can start to be affected, mood. And overall, if you find that your quality of life is diminishing, that's to me when I say, you know, we're probably getting a little too lean unless we have a goal, okay? Now, for those of us that decide to compete in a bodybuilding competition, that means we're probably gonna push through that, right? I myself have definitely pushed through that many times. I've gone to the point where I'm pretty tired, pretty food focused, but I'm not yet where I wanna be, and then it becomes a mental battle of telling myself that I'm not losing muscle, you know, that I'm willing to look skinny in my clothes to achieve a goal of getting to say 5% body fat. I think I've been close to that mark. I don't know exactly um, because I don't really get it tested very often when I'm that lean. You know, I did some stuff with USF last year where we did some testing and I was, I was below 7% body fat several weeks before my show. And I know I came down a little bit in body fat before that. So I'm sure I hit that mark pretty close and maybe I'll include some pictures and videos here. But the point is that body fat percentage is something that you know we, we we like to covet the number but really it comes down to what you're happy with are you happy with your look are you feeling good and can you keep going can you dig in to that body fat stores and get even lower because it begins to mess with our hormones and it begins to mess with our psychology so having something like a competition date in mind really has helped me focus go through those tough days deal with hunger deal with the drop in strength deal with a drop in energy and go, you know what, I have a goal, it's to do this and accomplish this. And it's not for everybody, okay? I certainly understand that getting shredded is not something that everybody needs to. Many people, when they come to me and they say, hey, I wanna to get to 10% body fat, they don't really get there because they're not getting on stage. They just end up going, you know what, it's not worth it to me. I don't wanna miss out on the things I'm having to miss out on. I'm, I'm low energy, I'm, you know, I'm grumpy with my partner, whatever it might be, pushing through to get shredded can actually be a struggle. So when you ask me the question, well, hey, can I keep going? Of course. I think as long as you're losing weight at the appropriate rate. Now, the leaner you get, the slower fat loss is going to be. Why will you have less body fat to lose? And your body is going to start adapting to that lower fat and start causing you to not be able to lose as quickly. So what's the appropriate amount of weight loss for someone that's at say 10% body fat like I, I put you at? Well, I'd say about a half a kilo or about a pound a week, okay? About 1% of your body weight. So if you're 135 pounds, that'd be 1.3 pounds, okay? That'd be less than a kilo a week. Now, for some people that might seem too slow, but for those of us who've been through this process, I can tell you time and time again, the people that crash diet through fat loss end up rapidly gaining it back. However, if you take your time and lose body fat the right way, well, you can keep it off and you can maintain it better, okay? You can do things like diet breaks and refeeds because you're not in a hurry, okay? And if you don't know how many calories you should start a diet at or a fat loss diet, I actually put one on my website for you. So if you go to prophysique.com, there is a calorie calculator on there. You can enter your sex, your height, your weight, all the things that you need. And it's gonna give you some numbers for weight loss, for muscle building, for rapid weight loss. But those are just guideline numbers, okay? Those are just areas where you can start. The most important thing is to actually use it for a week and then see if you lose weight, see if you lose body fat. That's what's gonna determine it. So for you, my friend, I just wanna say congrats. You have done an amazing job. You can certainly get leaner. You know, I want you to take your time. I want you to make sure you're doing it right. But you know, the leaner you get, the higher the risk for injury, for getting sick, for losing muscle, 
You need to keep your protein high like you've been doing. You need to keep training heavy like you've been doing and just allow it to come off gradually. Do not be in a rush, okay? And if you reach a sticking point, try to avoid overeating or overreacting to that. Try to just bring calories up slightly, 10 to 15% for a couple days, see how you feel, and then get back after it. All right, guys, as always, this is Coach Paul. If you need anything, hit my DMs up, leave a comment in the section below, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.